Good evening, church. Pastor Brad here at Peace Lutheran Church, 240 West 9th Avenue in Oshkosh. It is Wednesday, July the 7th, 2021. It is between the 6th and 7th Sunday after Pentecost. It is good to have you with us in worship tonight. Thank you for spending uh, part of your, your Sunday night with us, or Wednesday night with us. I guess it's not Sunday, but Wednesday night with us. A couple of quick announcements to share with you as uh, we get folks logged on this morning. A reminder that uh, at 6 o'clock tonight we'll be having Zoom communion. We'll drop the, that uh, Zoom link in the comment section and on our Facebook page so you can sure join us after uh, service is over at 6 o'clock, Zoom communion. And this coming Sunday we have uh, worship at 8 a.m. on Facebook Live and then at 9 a.m. Uh, in person or also live streamed on our Facebook page and on our website. So please come and, and join us this Sunday uh, at uh, 8 a.m. Facebook Live, 9 o'clock in person, live streamed. And then immediately following uh, in person service, we'll be having a uh, coffee hour for folks who might want to come and take part in that. And at 10 o'clock, we'll do a Zoom coffee hour. So lots of opportunities to connect uh, with the folks here at Peace. Uh, we'd love to have you. and. Uh, Great to see folks logging in tonight. Uh, good evening, Jerry. Nice to have you. And uh, and Terry, good evening. Good evening, folks. As you're uh, getting logged in, always nice to know uh, folks are watching and and to say uh, say good good evening as uh, as we get that chance. So, with that, let's take a moment. We'll prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. We begin with our evening prayer. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God, of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. May the poor be lifted up. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation, and with all your creatures we give you glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray. O God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we being defend, defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Once again, good evening. It's nice to have you uh, with us tonight. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being a part of our, our Wednesday night worship service. Our reading tonight comes from the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter. We begin with verse 14. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had been known. And some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason those powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and that he protected him. 
When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed and yet liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. And when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And Herod solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? And she replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. So immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and then laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Can you imagine hating someone or some situation so much that you wanted to do nothing but destroy it? Well, that seems a bit harsh on a Wednesday evening, doesn't it? But really, it's an honest question. Can you imagine having so much hatred inside of you towards another person that you would wish them death? Now, now some of you might say that Maybe the hatred is justified. Maybe it's, it's okay. And, and, it might, and I might, might even be inclined to, to agree with you, even though I struggle with the word hate or hating anything. But the fact remains that to have hatred for another person is not something to take lightly. But hatred is something that we have more often than we imagine. What we're getting at in our gospel lesson tonight is, is best described as hatred. There is jealousy and anger, a desire to prove how powerful one person is over another, a need to prove dominance, but all of it boils down to hatred. Herodias hates John the Baptist because he dared to question the marriage between Herodias and Herod. Even though Herod also hated John, he respected him. He, wanted, he liked listening to him. He thought that what John had to say was, uh, you know, was worth considering. But as much as he hated him, he was not willing to kill him. And so he, he refused Herodias' request, which angered her even more and gave the grudge that she had towards John even more weight. I mean... Herodias carries such a grudge for John that any opportunity to kill him, she's going to take. So Herod has his birthday party. His daughter entertains the guests. And in return, Herod says, I will give you whatever you want, even half of my kingdom. Simply ask, and I will keep my word. I will give you whatever you want. So Herod's daughter goes to her mother and says, Mom, what should I ask for? And now Herodias still has this hatred for John. And she says, say, I want John the Baptist's head on a platter. Think about that for a minute. She could have had anything in the world, including half of the kingdom, and yet the grief, yet, yet the hatred was so bad, the grudge was so strong, but they asked for John's head instead. And it's at this point you are probably wondering, but what does this have to do with me? I've never killed anybody. No, sure, no, maybe I've thought about it or, or thought it might be kind of nice, but that was, that was all in frustration. I was never serious. I would never actually kill somebody, I mean, or ask to have somebody killed. I mean, that's not the kind of person I am. So, you know, to think about it, 
it and to actually do it are, are two different things. But I think that's where we might be wrong. We've all been less kind to others. Many of us have shared rumors that we know aren't true, and yet we delight in sharing them anyway. Perhaps we've talked about someone behind their back, knowing full well that it will eventually get back to them. We hope that it will get back to them. We've knowingly excluded people from our events, our circle of friends, our relationships, and we've done this because we know that they present a threat to who we are. We have done this because we hold a grudge against them, because maybe they said something we didn't like or did something that we didn't agree with. And so we have this. Maybe we haven't asked to have somebody's head brought to us on a platter, but at least in theory, we've thought about it. All of us are capable of carrying a grudge against one another, and often we do it without fully realizing it. When we treat someone with disrespect or somehow say that they aren't worthy of God's love, grace, and forgiveness, then we are excluding them. We live in a world that seems to take pride in tearing apart one another, in finding ways to disagree with a different point of view, to prove that we are better than others. We will go to any length to show that we disagree. And if you look back a few verses in chapter 6 of the Gospel of Mark, you will see that Jesus warns his disciples about this very thing. He warns them that as they enter people's homes, they will often not be welcomed or appreciated. In fact, in some places, they might even get chased away. Jesus is telling them and telling us that sharing the good news of God's love for God's people is not for those who can't handle some adversity. You are going to run into adverse situations if you, can't, if you claim to be a follower of Christ. This idea of spreading God's message of grace and forgiveness is always going to be dangerous and unpopular. Yet you are called to do it because God expects nothing less from you. You are called to stand up to the powers of the people that oppress you, that oppress others, that threaten to oppress others because, of, because they hate you and everything you stand for. You are to stand up to those who hold you back you are also called to recognize when you contribute to that oppression. Because we also contribute to it far more than we ever might recognize. And when we recognize that we contribute to that oppression, we are to work to help end that behavior. For the next few weeks, we are going to be exploring the idea that there is a place for all of us at the table, that God has created a space specifically for you, and that we are to do our best to make sure that others feel welcome at the table. And now this is a, a very tall task because we are very good at excluding people we don't like and pretending like it didn't happen. We are good at telling ourselves that we are people who extend a welcome to others, but in reality, we really only extend that welcome to people that we like. We allow our dislike to guide our decisions rather than taking the approach that there is room for new ideas or ideas that are different from our own. Notice I've never once said that we always have to agree. Sometimes we simply disagree, but that does not mean that we have to exclude others because we disagree with them. Beloved, you know what it is like to be excluded, to be treated as less than, to find that you don't fit in no matter what you do. The truth is the world is good at telling us that we don't that we aren't good enough, and we too often believe it. 
So I want you to embrace the truth that God's love for you is bigger than your doubt. It's bigger than those who would discourage you. It is an invitation that is extended to all people in all places. There is a place at the table for you. And God is extending that welcome. So let's pray. God, help us to believe that there is a place at the table for us. Help us to not let our hatred get in the way of the work you're trying to do in our lives. Help us to let go of the hatred so that we can fully embrace your grace, forgiveness, and love so that we might share that with others. In your name we pray. Amen. Once again, good evening to everyone who, uh, who is joining us tonight. Thanks for being, thanks for being here and for uh, spending part of your, your Wednesday evening with us, Wednesday uh, July the seventh, twenty twenty one. Thanks for uh, thanks for being here, and a uh, uh, good evening to Donna and to Joyce and to others who have jumped in and and uh, been a part of our service tonight. And uh, I'm grateful that you're with us and grateful to be able to share uh, the good news of God's love. And I'm also thankful for your continued support of the ministry that happens here at Peace. We simply couldn't do this without you. And so if you ask me the best way to support us, I'm always going to tell you, please pray for us. Because prayer does make a difference. If you're able to help us financially, that's also greatly appreciated. And there's a variety of ways to do that. I think the easiest way is to simply go to our website, peaceoshkosh.com. Click on the Donate Here button. It's a couple of steps, and it and you're, you're in and you're good to go. So please uh, consider uh, helping us financially. Uh, but at, at the very least, uh, please continue to pray for us because, again, prayer does make a difference and we are greatly appreciative of, of your prayers. So speaking of prayer, that's what we call a segue, right? Uh, speaking of prayer, uh, we're going to move into a time of prayer. What's going to happen is uh, I'm going to offer up several petitions. At the end of each petition, I will say, let us pray to the Lord and wherever you happen to be, I invite you to uh, respond with, Lord, have mercy. All right? So let's pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and to every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We offer now a time of prayer where I invite you to pray wherever you happen to be. You can pray out loud or silently, or, or maybe you come with sighs that are too deep for words. But bring your prayers before God. 
And if you are so inclined, you can drop prayers in the comments section uh, for the community to lift up. There are folks who do come back throughout the week to see what we can be praying for. Um, and so I invite you to do that if you are so inclined. With that, let's pray. We pray this night for all those who are affected by weather. We are grateful for the rain that has fallen uh, here in Wisconsin over the last uh, 24 hours. It has been nourishing and very needed uh, for us, and for that we are grateful. But we also know that many parts of our uh, country are in desperate need of moisture. And so we pray for those places and in hopes that they receive the moisture that they are that they have needed. We pray for those in Florida who are in the path of Hurricane Elsa as it, uh, it takes land and, and, and uh, does what it needs to do. And uh, we pray for all those who are experiencing excessive heat and they have no way to uh, no way to cope with it. We pray for those who don't have places to be, who don't uh, have safe places that they can exist to ride out some this extreme weather. We pray for all those who struggle with insecurities, whether it be housing insecurity or financial insecurity, or food insecurity, health insecurities, uh, not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring, not being confident in who you have created them to be. And we pray this night for all those who are sick, whether their diagnosis is, whether their diagnosis are known or unknown. We pray for all those who struggle, who struggle with health issues. And we also pray for our, our doctors and nurses and, and the medical staffs and all those who care for people in facilities. And God, this night we bring to you all those who rest in our hearts. We bring to you Les and Eugene and Paula and John and Judy and Chet and Diane and Joyce and Bev and Doris and Carol and Sally and Donna and Sally and Norm and Doris and all others that we have brought before you. You know the needs of your people. And so we continue to raise them up to you. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. And giving thanks for all who have gone before us in our rest and rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you. Through Christ our Lord. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us, your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen.
Once again, it is good to have been worth with you tonight in worship. Thank you for uh, spending part of your Wednesday evening with us or um, whenever you happen to tune in. We do know folks that uh, come along and uh, tune in throughout the week. So we are grateful for that and always uh, grateful for knowing that you're with us. So thanks for saying hello. And uh, with that, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so uh, have a great week. Blessings to you. And, all, and as always, know that God loves you. And so do I. It's true. We'll see you soon.